Alright, how's it going everyone? Hope you're having a good morning or afternoon or evening, whatever time it is there. I hope it's treating you well. Today, we are going to either cover five good habits and five bad habits, or we're going to do two separate videos. I like to rant, so we'll see. We'll see how long <laughs> this takes. Okay, so the first bad habit, we're going to discuss bad habits, banishing them, and then we're going to discuss good habits to invoke them hopefully in their place or somewhere similar. The first bad habit is obsessing over, well obsessing over anything really, but specifically over technique. Making sure that you have the correct sigil or the correct incantation or making sure that you're using the most powerful forces that you possibly can. Just, just remember that a lot of this happens outside of your intellect. So when you're in the middle of a rite or a ceremony or a working or a spell, whatever, and you're in the, the throes of it, and all of a sudden you're thinking, oh, I should have used this oil instead of that oil, or I, I should have had seven candles instead of five, or whatever that may be something of what some people call a gnosis startle which can sort of fire things into the back of the head i found that most people are just distracted when they're thinking things like that so don't obsess over your technique don't obsess over your technology um oh i don't have a wand or i, I don't have a, a robe or whatever all of these things are symbolic. Do they help? Absolutely, they help. But are they necessary? No, they're not necessary. Um, this, here's the truth of it. <laughs> um, don't obsess over using the correct sigils, the correct in incantations. All of that stuff is, they're stepping stones. Um, they, are, they are just guides. Moving on. The other thing is another type of obsession which is obsessing over others what are others doing how how would someone else do this can this be useful 100 percent, absolutely but not if we're obsessing um, obsessing over what others might think of what we're doing obsessing over um the external as opposed to concerning yourself with what's going on in your own inner worlds so often people will look like they'll, they'll google healing spell or they will get on reddit and say hey like i've got this thing how would you guys do it and i understand a lot of these people don't know what to do that's that's perfectly fine ask questions if you don't know what to do but i'm talking about people who have a habit a proclivity with going out before they go in this this can be harmful for multiple reasons it's at least it at least can be harmful to your creativity and your sense of self-confidence so just be wary of of that when you when you go to do a working sit down with yourself a lot of times when i go when i go to do a working i will think about the working and I will just get a pen and paper and whatever comes to me intuitionally, boom, jotting it down, boom, writing it down. Yes, love it. All of the artistic parts of my soul stirring, writing it down. Then I, I sit with what I have and I say, okay, what colors, if they didn't come to me, am I going to use? Um, what numbers, what names, what symbols, yada, 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 all of that stuff. Allow it to come to you and then you can look around and see how much your practice changes after that because instead of giving offerings of time and attention to your faculties that are pointed outward you will be giving time and attention to the faculties that point inward and guide you into your own personal path the third bad habit that i've noticed is talking about your workings, past, present, and future. Make sure that if you're talking about something, that it's one, 
not ongoing, or two, that the person that you're talking to about it actually has your best interests in mind and they actually might want to assist with it. Um, talking about past workings. This can be fine, especially if it's already resolved, especially if you want to teach someone or share something. But if you're just doing it to be a braggart, or if you're just doing it to try to intimidate someone or convince someone, it might not be the most healthy practice. Talking about future workings, this can get really hazardous. You can introduce a lot of doubt from others by doing this. You're going to try to do what? And you're going to do it like that? Okay, good luck. Or, no, 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 you, should, you shouldn't do that. No, no, that's, that's bad. That's not good. Or, yeah, that'll definitely work. Yeah, totally. That, that'll absolutely work. Yeah. All of these things can get in the way. <laughs> Especially... All of these things can get in the way, especially if you're receiving more dopamine from talking about it than actually planning it out and taking measures toward, uh, toward achieving it. Moving on. I've already sort of discussed this one, but we can, I guess it's, it's worth mentioning twice. Always looking out instead of looking in. Um, this does relate to getting techniques and advice from others, but it also relates to a proclivity to only do external workings. And I understand that external workings aren't always material, bringing happiness to them, but make sure that you're doing some stuff for yourself as well. I find myself, I, I have to go and look in my, my journal, my, my spell log, um, and make sure I'm doing things for myself as well. And I have I have my morning and my evening ceremonies. But at the same time, like we we should, you know, maybe also take a little bit more time for ourselves. So don't always point your spells outward. Sometimes point them inward as well. The last bad habit that I've noticed is too many egregores, too many thought forms. Letting off too many sigils at once. Uh, one reason that's a problem is because you're gonna you're gonna get strung out if you have too many thoughts and thought forms pulling at your focus and your attention all the time. I'm extremely I have I have been rather extremely guilty of this in the past. When I first started practicing, I was making two like at least a few sigils a day, sometimes a few dozen, and. I turned into a scatterbrain. I turned into an absolute space cadet more than I already am. And another reason that this can be harmful is forgetting about the thought forms and egregores. This is another reason for a magical journal. If you have a thought form that is extremely well placed and well thought out and well charged, that is to say, I mean, that kind of explains itself, but for the people who are not sure what I'm talking about, if you have put a lot of time and energy and attention into this thing, think about it from a neural perspective, a neuron that is used to being fired over and over and over. Nature takes the path of least resistance most of the time. So if you have a very powerful egregore that you've forgotten about, it can, it can seem like a hex or a curse or a binding that someone else has put on you and you're doing all kinds of reversals, and you're doing all kinds of banishings, and you're doing all kinds of things and nothing's working, perhaps start doing some cord cuttings on, you know, your own, your own things. And be careful, obviously, but that's something that I've noticed that I wanted to share. And I guess all five of these are. And this is a nice short little 10 minute video, so we'll probably leave it at that. Everyone have a good rest of the day. Thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below. Otherwise, take care and thank you.